I'm Katie Wilde. I'm a singer-songwriter from the UK and I'm going to be converting this Ford Transit into an off-grid camper van so I can take my music on the road, write with amazing musicians and go to amazing locations and just have an adventure. And this is Ellie, my partner in crime who'll be helping with the build and joining me in the van. If this sounds like something you're into, make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow along with Wild Adventures. Welcome to week 12. This week, heater goes in, water goes in, and other things. Enjoy. Cause I said one word, too much, you said nothing, and that hurts. Now I sound crazy, cause we just met. We just met. Lots of progress has been made. I'm through all the layers of the floor and I'm down to metal. I bought a really cheap um, hole saw for the cutting of the metal because I'm only going to use it once. Um, but what that means is it really struggles to actually cut through metal. So what I'm doing now is because this is ribbed, it's only cutting on one side. And if I go at it from underneath, because I'm halfway through on this side, if I go underneath and go and cut the hole from bottom up, I'm hoping it will help make the process a little bit quicker. So that's what I'm going to do now. There's no way I could do this in film. <laughs> so now that I'm finally through all the layers of the floor and I'm through the metal, I need to protect all that exposed metal from rust, just like we did at the very beginning with all those naff bits. So I've Got the hammer right out, I'm just going to cover those little gaps. Yet another slight setback is this plate is meant to be attached to the bottom of the van by screwing four holes and then um, putting bolts in and putting nuts on from the underneath up, right? But these two holes, fine, I, I could put bolts on the underside of that. These two are absolutely in the way of the fuel tank and that structural support rib so I can't do those two holes so I thought that's fine I'll drill the two holes at the bottom two is more than enough but I don't actually have the right size drill bit to get through the floor and, <laughs> and the van all the drill bits I have that are long enough to do that are way too fat so I've decided to just glue that plate to the floor it's never going to go anywhere. I'm never going to move it. Why not? The glue I'm using, or the adhesive I'm using, is this stuff. This is used to fix the windows on, so it's weather resistant. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Call me lazy, call me weak, call me broken, call me cheap, call me dirty, I agree, call me anything. Oh, I've heard it all before. This ain't me. Oh my giddy aunt, was that a huge pain in my ass. So any um, smart person would have um, put all of the um, heater and the stuff that attaches underneath together, you know, on the floor, on a table, somewhere that makes sense. But what I did was I fastened the heater down and because of the reason I explained before about holes, I glued it down using that which meant I had to attach everything from underneath the van. And let me show you, let me show you how annoying that was. So this one here, the silver one is the exhaust. Great. This one is the air filter. Great. Yet to be mounted in some way that makes sense. But in here, can you see where I'm pointing? Oh God. In there, there's a Jubilee clip that holds this on. And there's another one right in there that holds this on. Now, <laughs> I had to tighten them up from underneath. It took absolutely ages. I could barely get a tool in there and it would tighten about 0 0.05 of a millimeter. And then you'd have to take it off and do it again and do it again. And then by the time I'd get 
half a res revolution of the screw around, my hand would get tired, I'd let go or I'd drop something and then I'd have to start again. It probably, honestly, to get all that stuff in, to get the fuel pipe on with the little, um, little pressure clips, the um, exhaust and the air intake on has probably taken about three hours. It should have taken 20 minutes if I did it in the right order. But it's in. This plate, because I can't screw it down, is just glued down with this. It should be fine because it has a working temperature of 80 degrees. I think if that gets to 80 degrees, I've got other problems like things setting on fire. So that should be fine. Um, there is a hole here with a rubber grommet on the underneath for the fuel line, which I just need to now plumb into this. There is nowhere for a fuel line to go in this, so you have to put one of these in. This is what the fuel line will attach to. That bit sits inside the tank and that pokes out of the tank. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to prep the tank. I've already screwed in these bits of wood is what it will attach to. Hopefully this bit will go a little bit smoother than um, putting a heater in. So far, every single step of putting this in has been a huge pain, but progress has been made. So the method I'm using to attach this little fuel sender pipe thing into the hole that I've made in the fuel tank is I've fed through a load of spare fuel line. I'm just going to jam this on the end. That's not to stay like that. And I'm going to pull it through. Other end. been a few days since I put the tank in and faffed around with the heater but I have some good news it's all fully installed it works and I've got it all mounted properly I think this is the final configuration it might change a little bit and this will need to be mounted on the um, the kitchen front that will eventually go there but let me talk you through Another issue I had, a massive issue I had. So when you first turn one of these things on, you have to prime the fuel lines, right? So you have to turn the pump on to suck fuel out of this to go into here. It took me maybe six goes round the priming cycle and I wasn't really sure why. I thought maybe because I had all these funny angles, but I've seen so many other people put these in with the fuel tank right at the back and the heater at the front and a much bigger distance of, for the fuel to travel. So it took me loads of times and I didn't know why. And then when I got it primed, I finally tried to turn it on. And just as it started to tick over, it would cut out on me and a warning sign would come up saying E01, error one, which I looked in the manual and online. And that means that there's not enough power getting to it. And I thought, have I bought the wrong one? Is there something wrong with my battery? Um, it took me a couple of days to realize that the only thing I'd done wrong was I used a cable that was too thin. So over the, a quite short distance the fuel has to travel I had a voltage drop before it could get going and it would just cut out um, I saw people online trying to fix this and some people were, would replace the control unit or they would look at getting a new pump and I was thinking I don't want to throw more money at it um, so I thought at least the cable if that's wrong it's not a total waste because I've got uh, some cable that will probably be useful for something else in the future got the cable and it powers up just fine another problem I had which this one is just me being stupid to be honest the fuel comes out of the fuel tank from the little hole I put in it and then it goes into a fuel filter and then into the pump and then under the floor into the bottom of this but this fuel filter is, is pretty important. Without that, you'll end up gumming something up, it will break. But I don't know if you can see that I've got it attached with a tie wrap or zip tie. And originally I had tie wrapped straight over the filter itself, but it's actually made of quite a brittle plastic. So when I tightened it down, I put a big crack through the filter and I thought, it's just a crack, it won't leak, it'll be fine. 
So I I primed it up and tried to get it going, and it just spilt diesel everywhere. I had diesel pouring all over the floor of the van. Uh, so I turned everything off. I stopped the pump pulling more diesel out, and I tried to get everything out. But the process in getting all of this taken apart meant disconnecting tubes and taking this off. But when there's fuel already in the system, that means I'm just opening more areas for diesel to come out. So I poured even more diesel all over the floor of the van. It was it was a nightmare. Um, I got it out. I managed to prop the tank up inside, upside down, so no more diesel would fall out. And then I went and found another another little fuel filter and got it all installed again. My worry was that the diesel would be seeped into things and I'd end up having a big old fire hazard because, you know, this thing makes fire and I've now given it a little pool of diesel to sit in. It doesn't seem right. So I used some pretty strong um, degreaser and well, brake, brake cleaner to try and get rid of it. And you can't even smell it in here anymore because it was rancid. The whole van smelt like diesel. So I think I've managed to clean it up properly. I've managed to get rid of the smell and mount it all. Oh, and another thing, that while I left, these cables weren't mounted up here, they were all lying on the floor. So they all got covered in diesel. And this kind of sheathing around the cable melted on, <laughs> and this, this cable here was covered in this black stuff. And all that stuff, the glue, reacted with the diesel and turned to this absolute gooey mush. It was awful. So I probably spent an hour or two ages. It felt like seven hours slowly peeling all this stuff off. And then I used electrical tape to cover it up again. And I was originally, I thought that the reason it didn't work was because of that. And I was going to buy a new little wiring loom for it, not the cable that I used for my power issue. Turns out that was the issue and it's fine. I didn't need to buy a new loom, but I had a huge issue with that. I had a huge issue with that. I had a huge issue with the hole going in here, but it does, it does work. I'm surprised this was such a pain in the ass, but I got there eventually. And one more thing I'm considering changing or is definitely something I need to think about. I've got this box of fire stored right next to a tank full of diesel. Part of me thinks I should probably build some sort of fire break. I've got plenty of metal that's left over from cutting windows and roofs, and I've got lots of the um, foil reflective layer um, that I could cover that with and make kind of a fire barrier. But you can buy these in one in a unit that is one contained box, and all that is is the heat is the heater itself and a much smaller fuel tank that's the sort that's the size of this that sits right on top of it. There's a little metal thing and then the, the fuel sits right on top and it's all in one box. Now if they can sell that, it means that storing the fuel right next to the heater can't can't be that bad. So I'm still undecided whether I'm gonna make some sort of fire break, but for now. It works. This is where the heat will come out into the van. That'll get mounted on a panel. I'm not sure if in this light you can see the panel, but it turns on. It takes a little while to get going, but I sort of want to prove to you that it does work because this is literally, this probably should have taken one day to go from nothing to completely installed. But with all the problems and faffing, it probably took me, I think it was about two days for something that should not have taken two days. But let me show you it working. So after about 30 seconds of the fan getting going, the pump starts. Can you hear that? That's sucking fuel from in here, through the filter, down under the van and into the bottom of this. It's pretty noisy. So in the future when I'm recording music in here, it doesn't matter how cold it is, I'm gonna to have to turn this off to do any kind of filming because it is loud and it gets louder. It's starting to really go now. Can you hear how loud this is? It is hot, it is working. And once it gets up to temperature, it does calm down a little bit. It's still quite loud, but it does calm down. Underneath, it sounds like a rocket's going off, and from the outside, you can hear it pretty clearly. You definitely wouldn't want to turn this on if you were trying to 
stealthily camp on a residential street. So um, that's good to know. Just to explain the position of it, why I've rammed it all into this small space, is because I want to keep all of this free for storage underneath there. And the diesel tank for the van is here. So when I show up to a petrol station, I can go to fuel the van up like a normal person, and then also just pop the door open and fuel up here. So that's the reason the position is there. I've seen uh, the Indie Projects put theirs there, but they mounted their tank right at the back. I wanna keep the space at the back free because if possible, I'd like to bring both my guitars. I don't know if they'll fit, but I'd like to bring two guitars. I'd like to bring um, a PA system for gigging and tools in case something breaks. So I don't really want to take up any of the boot space, garage space, with a diesel tank because so much of that area has already been wasted, taken up with the electrics and the battery. Speaking about services and new things in the van, all the water is in. I was going to make an entire video on just the water, but it's sort of not really worth its own video. It's really, really simple. Once I'd gathered all the bits and got it all together, it only really took me half a day, but it took me a little while of ordering the bits, waiting for stuff to come, and learning about connecting plumbing things. So let me talk you through it. This bowl, wonderfully chosen by Ellie in HomeSense, is just a standard like mixing bowl that we drilled a hole in. This is a filtered water tap. And the reason I wanted filtered water is because I don't really know where I'm gonna be getting my water from. I think it's gonna vary. Sometimes it'll be perfectly clean and nice. Other times it's gonna be a dodgy tap from a, a petrol station. I'm not really sure, but I don't fancy dirty water. So let me talk you through the flow of how it all goes. This tank is gonna be full of clean water and this one is the wastewater, as you can see straight from the sink, straight into the dirty water holder. The reason I chose this one for the fresh water is because algae, algae and mold and all that stuff builds up when, when light can hit the water. And I know light can get through this. It will be built into this so we all be covered. But the less light I can get into the water, the less chance of mold and it going all gross. So, clean water, dirty water. This is attached with a hose pipe connector. So if I'm showing up to somewhere that has a hose, I can disconnect this and pull in the hose from the window and fill up really easily without having to drag these out. Obviously, if I do have to drag these out somewhere, I can just undo this, pull this out and take the whole thing out. This inside here, it's just hose. So it's hose pipe from the bottom that goes to hose pipe connector that I can fill up from the outside or connect to the rest of the system. So from that freshwater tank, we have to build up pressure somehow, right? And I thought about getting a, a 12 volt um, pump, but they're pretty cheap and they're pretty easy to install. I just didn't want another thing that wouldn't work. If the power went out, I wouldn't have a heater, I won't have electric, I won't have anything, but at least if the power goes out, I can push water out. It's one less thing to deal with. Um, so I got a foot pump. So we go from clean water, goes out and into the foot pump here. This, you pump down on here, that comes out of this side, through to the back here, and it goes from a little adapter from that thick cab cable, that thick hose, into this really, really thin hose that fits with the filter. This whole connection thing was a right faff because I ordered the wrong part. This part here, it is the correct thing to go from that size hose to that size pipe, but there was no thread, there was no way of connecting it. So I went to B&Q and spoke to about four members of staff to try and figure it out. And I ended up getting a brass gas fitting that I could thread on, little Jubilee clip, and it works. I had to almost melt this in boiling water to get it stretchy enough to go around, but it works. So I go from the pump into a gas fitting into my filter. These filters should last six months, 
So you put a little date on them. I've got two more. They come in a pack of three. So it'll last me ages. I know that every single bit of water coming out that tap is going to be at least partially filtered. I think they're pretty good. They're meant to be good. These are what you get drinking water taps in kitchens. That's what they're for. So I trust it. I think it's going to be good enough. So from that filter, it gets pumped up. It comes through with a little tap and into the, the cute little bowl. This is, I'm going to be honest, really slow, really annoying. And from, from videos I'd seen, it looks so much more efficient. People push it and loads of water comes out. I get this little tiny piddle. But I, I'm, part of me thinks maybe it's because of the extra pressure needed to get through, through the filter. I don't know. I mean, I'll live with it. At the end of the day, it's a van. It doesn't matter that much, but it is kind of annoying. And then um, pop this open. Goes rushing into there. Happy days. So that is a whole kitchen worktop, water, heating. My little cooler is gonna go in there. This whole area is gonna be tiles. And big development, it might not sound like a big development, but this whole area here has been an absolute nightmare to try and figure out how to make this a nice little storage area. It's such an awkward shape. I found it really difficult. I've been contemplating it for weeks. It's probably why I've left it right to the very end, but it's done. It just needs doors. I think it looks really good. Once the tiles are on here and the doors are on, it's going to be, it's going to be banging. The doors are going to be the same color as this one, Tempest teapot. And I think this whole area is going to look brilliant. I've also started some progress on over bed storage. So with this now finished, apart from doors, and this going up so quickly, I'm pretty confident that it's not going to take me very long to make another one across here. Before I do that, I do want to put a mattress in and lie in it and sit up to make sure that I'm not going to just smack my head on it. I'm pretty sure it's high enough and further enough away to not be an issue, but I do want to check before putting this one up. And then it's just cover up all these, make a drawer here, cover this up, couple of drawers here, nice cupboard faces, big door here so I can get to the water, but it can be covered up. I need to make this open vertically. I need to cut a new one of these because this isn't very neat. Cut two faces for this, put in sort of house sockets. I'm going to mount some sockets down here, like in a cafe when they're down by your feet. I'm going to have two house plugs down there. Doors for this. And then I honestly think that's it. I think it's pretty damn close. I'm tempted to build a little kind of shelf along here to keep tins of stuff and coffee or I don't know. But that's a, that's a nice to have. I can store most stuff in the I'm going to have two drawers here and a drawer here. I think that will cover most of my cooking things. I can always have a section, like a little basket in here for some cooking things. So I'm honestly, I'm re I'm close. I'm really close. So stay tuned because maybe two more videos time, I'm going to be heading out, maybe three, give myself some room. Three more videos. Soon I'll be heading out and spending my first night in the van properly off grid and yeah, so stick around for that. Mm -hmm.